thank you very much for the special number that uh, uh, the uh, youth group uh, rendered this morning. We truly appreciate uh, uh, their uh, ministry of uh, singing for the Lord and to the Lord as well. And we are uh, grateful to God for each one of you that uh, uh, dared uh, the rain so that we can be together where I feel God would have us to be uh, gathered and under the roof so that uh, we can lift them up uh, before uh, others, before the Lord and before us. We appreciate all of you that are with us online. We are grateful that uh, though you were not able to come, na kayo ay, uh, uh, you enlisted so that uh, we were expecting to uh, have at least a minimal attendees of uh, 30 and yet uh, some were not able to make it and that is most understandable because it appears parang <laughs> inihinder tayo na huwag na pumunta kasi sana naman tayo na na hindi nagagather at saka uh, biglang uh, bumuhos ang ulan but just the same thank God for uh, uh, those of you that are here. Okay, maybe next Lord's Day ay hindi na uh, maulan. Okay, we thank God uh, this morning for uh, Brother Rafi's uh, birthday. Uh, pag tumama talaga sa linggo ay double blessing yun. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the Lord's Day and your birthday. And thank God uh Jeff Abutal uh, came back safely after months of being on uh, the high seas, uh, working on board uh, a ship. And uh, we are thankful to God for uh, 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 his daily uh, blessings, loads of loads of blessings uh, that uh, if we would just make account. Uh, we won't be able uh, to uh, count the blessings that the Lord has seen fit to shower us uh, all these years and from the time He came into our lives. So without any further ado, I nice kong ating ituloy ang ating mensahe uh, patungkol sa banal na Espiritu Santo. Uh, last two Sundays were most important uh, on our study relative to the person of the Holy Spirit sapagkat uh, uh, two Sundays ago uh, we uh, took up uh, the uh, indwelling of the Spirit kung saan siya ay uh, He actually enters uh, our uh, lives, our hearts uh, as the Lord's uh, representative uh, for our Lord Jesus Christ is ascended to heaven and is uh, on the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh, and uh, the Holy Spirit uh, actually uh, indwells every believer. If you are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you are not a believer because uh, uh, you are born again uh, uh, by the regenerating uh, power of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, last Sunday, Another most important truth about uh, the uh, uh, ministry or what the Spirit does for believers is He infills us. And we can find this uh, uh, in uh, the life of the early church, in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, being filled with the Spirit is to be fully, fully uh, controlled uh, by the Spirit. Uh, it's like nung panahon si D.L. Moody, America's uh, most famous and well-traveled evangelist, ay uh, sa America ay may mga pastors uh, na uh, nagplano na magkaroon sila ng evangelistic meeting. 
So with uh, these pastors gathered, pinag-usapan nila kung saan ay uh, uh, sa evangelistic meeting ay mag-anyaya sila ng isang uh, talagang uh, uh, speaker na magiging blessing hanggang uh, may sumagot, tumayo, sumagot ay isang pastor. Sabi, uh, sabi niya, uh, uh, I suggest na ang kunin natin uh, uh, maging speaker ay si uh, D.L. or Dwight L. Moody. Uh, pagkatapos, tahimik ang mga pastors at may isang tumayo. Bakit si D.L. Moody? Siya lang ba ang may monopoly uh, sa Holy Spirit? Siya lang ba ang may uh, angkin sa Holy Spirit? Natahimik lahat. Pati yung nagsuggest. And then after uh, a minute or two of silence, ay may tumayo uli na isang pastor. Sa, so mag, uh, tumayo siya, so magot siya, No! Uh, D.L. Moody does not have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a monopoly on D.L. Moody. And that is what it means to be controlled by the Spirit. The Spirit has a, 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 a grasp and a grip on your life. Okay, He is in control. You are a liken to a person who is under the influence or control of alcohol or wine or liquor na nakalalasing. Okay? So, uh, uh, ngayon ay uh, ang ating uh, kukonsiderahin ay isa sa misunderstood na gawain ng Espiritu that even among our uh, kind of uh, uh, believers ay tilay hindi lubusang maunawaan o maintindihan ito na parang sinasabi ng iba, ito ay pang Pentecostal which if we check in the light of the Bible is it is not so. Okay? So it's a biblical doctrine and it is a personal uh, mighty work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of God's people whom He indwelt, whom He fills. And now, the subject this morning based on Luke chapter 4 and then verse 18 and 19. Luke chapter 4, okay? So, uh, basahin natin please, okay? Dito ang verse 18 and verse 19. But in the context of this, you will discover what I uh, have just uh, mentioned last two Sundays and Sunday na katotohan ng gawain ng Espiritu. Sabi dito, And the Spirit, uh, if you have a red letter, uh, Bible, uh, you will discover that this is Jesus Christ Himself speaking. At nangyari ito uh, sa opening ng kanyang public ministry. Itong installation or induction niya into public ministry or into His offices as God sent uh, 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 man and God, okay? Uh, the God man, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay? And then another text, kasi this is something that we must understand lest among our Baptist kind, I misunderstood 
uh, ang iyong posisyon at ang turo ito sa Biblia at kayo ay patuloy na sunod-sunuran na hindi ninyo alam kung ano ang ibig sabihin nitong anointed with the Spirit. Okay? Uh, buksan natin please sa Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Behind uh, this ministry of the Holy Spirit and that we might enhance it in our lives. Father, bless your word and thank you for reaching down to undeserving sin sinners and enriching us through your mar marvelous grace so that we can uh, be saved and be indwelt and be infilled with your spirit. We covet that the spirit would uh, give us a proper understanding of what this anointing with the spirit is and is all about. Give us, O oh Lord, the understanding, open our hearts, our minds, so that we can absorb what you would have us to learn from this work of the Spirit in the lives of his people then and now. We give you the honor, the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Anointed with the Spirit. Now, ang text na binasa natin ay ito ay sa simula ng ministry ng Panginoon ay siya ay inanoint ng Panginoong Diyos at ng banal na Espiritu. Hindi siya pinahintulutan o pinayagan na magsimula ng kanyang earthly ministry na hindi siya maging pinunasan o kaya uh, anointed with the Spirit. Sa chapter 4, as most of you know, ay dito masusumpungan ang ilang katotohanan na ito ay Panginoong Isa Kristo na mismo ay Diyos na nagkatawang tao ay kinilala niya ang katotohanan ng ito na kailangan sa buhay niya at kailangan sa buhay ng bawat mananampalataya na kanyang susuguin upang humayo at tularan ang kanyang naging uh, karanasan sa paglilingkod sa Panginoong Diyos. Dito sa chapter 4 ay mapapansin natin ang unang ginawa ng banal na Espiritu sa kanya ay he was sa chapter 4 verse 1, he was led, he was full of the Spirit. Sa so verse 1, he was full of the Spirit. Second, he was led by the Spirit. And then third, I he had been empowered. He was powered by the Spirit. Sapagat yung temptations, yung trials, and then yung kanyang uh, uh, wilderness uh, trials na kung saan 40 days and 40 nights ay, uh, ay nag-ayono siya, etc., ay ang sabi sa atin sa banal na kasulatan, ay he returned in the power of the Spirit at mapapansin natin, it was through the anointing of God and the Holy Spirit. Sa Acts chapter 10, verse 38, kinukonfirm dito sa atin that Jesus Christ, when He began His public ministry, He was installed or inducted into the offices na gagampanan niya, ay he was anointed with the Spirit. Now, another truth, now this is not only true with our Lord Jesus Christ, but this is true with every believer in Jesus Christ. Yan ang ating bibigyan uh, ng pansin sapagat ito ay parang may mga taong minomonopolize ito na sa kanila lang ito maliban sa Panginoon sa kanila lang ito 
at hindi kabahagi dito ang mga mananampalataya o mga believers o lalo na mga members ng uh, churches ng Panginoon. So 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. Sapagkat ang application nito is far reaching at sinabi ito sa atin sa banal na kasulatan. Verse 27. Verse 27, But the anointing which you have received of Him, that's of God, and the Spirit, abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teach you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. So lahat ng mga mananampalataya, sabi ni John, the beloved, as inspired by the Spirit. Sa verse 20, balik tayo sa verse 20 ng same chapter. Okay, tingnan nyo please. You cannot be a believer na uh, hindi mo ito uh, maunawaan. But you have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. Thanks. The word unction and the word anoint or anointed means one and the same thing. Okay, and I will be explaining this in a few while. Anointing or ano- being anointed ay ito, ay rooted ito sa Old Testament. Ang word dito ay masyak. M-A-S-I-A-C-H in English uh, letters. Masyak, anointed. At ito ay unang masusumpungan sa aklat ng Genesis. Doon sa aklat ng Genesis, ang pasimula nito ay nangyari ito sa buhay ni Jacob na twin brother ni Iso na dahil sa uh, uh, ninakaw niya ang birthright at saka ang blessing na naukol sana sa firstborn ay it caused problems so he had to depart from home na siya ay umalis sapagkat sa galit at nais na siya ay paslangin ng kanyang kapatid, his mother told him to go back to their province at doon siya uh, manatili at maghanap ng kanyang magiging uh, mapapangasawa. So on the way, doon sa uh, uh, pinanggalingan ng kanyang magulang ng kanilang pamilya sa probinsya ay Pawang kaba siya, kabado siya, nag-iisa siya, malungkot siya, at siya ay naglalakbay hanggang siya ay nakarating sa isang lugar na sa tindi ng kanyang pagod ay siya ay natulog sa ibabaw ng mga bato na ginawa niyang unan yung bato. At Genesis 31 yan, before we open our Bible there. At nung siya'y natulog, ay siya'y nagkaroon ng panaginip. Although it was a real truth to life na experience sa buhay niya. At doon sa panaginip niya, ay nakita niya ang kalangitan at kung saan ang mga anghel ay nanaog. They came down and up ay pagising niya kinaumagahan ay yung bato na kanyang uh, uh, ginamit bilang kanyang unan ay ito ay binuhusan niya ng oil, ng langis. Okay, this is the first. At ang unang gumamit ng pagbuhos niya ng langit, langis na ito sa chapter 31 
ay ang Panginoong Diyos. Tingnan nyo please, ngayon bubukas na tayo para maintindihan natin sa New Testament. Ang application nito ay kinakailangan makita natin how in antiquity uh, it runs down uh, to uh, uh, the New Testament. Genesis chapter 31. Okay? Genesis chapter 31. Okay? Verse... 11 to 13. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, yung angel of God, walang iwa kundi ang Panginoon. And I said, Here am I. And he, he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle uh, uh, are uh, ring straight, uh, speckled and grizzled, for I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Yung experience niya pala hapwe, bago siya nakarating kay laban na kanyang tiyohin, ay pagbalik niya, ay uh, ma makahulugan ito, sapagkat hindi niya na pansin, na ito palang Bethel is the house of God where God met him. At doon, I God anointed him, he anointed yung bato, ngayon God anointed him, that is in preparation for his encounter sa kanyang kapatid na si Iso, na matindi ang galit at banta. And this serves as a reminder to him as well as an impression encouragement to him that he has uh, God's full backing na back up uh, niya ang Panginoon he is backed up by God that nothing will happen to him sa kanyang pagharap sa kanyang kapatid di ba you know this story pag ginarap siya ni eh, uh, uh, dati kabado siya on the way grabbing kamay niya Kaya nagpahuli pa nga siya, sa likod pa siya para kung paslangin yung kanyang mga anak at uh, yung apat na babae sa buhay niya, ay at least uh, siya ay may pagkakataon makatakas. But to his surprise, yung kanyang kapatid na si Iso ay miss na miss na pala siya. He was embraced and uh, they were in good terms so uh, to speak. He was most welcomed by his brother who softened the heart of Iso. Who protected Jacob? My friend is God. And this anointing is actually, it has to do with the preparation of Jacob as he encounters meeting his brother who previously threatened to kill him. Okay? So this, the book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. Then throughout the five books of Moses, we see this over and over again, itong anointing na ito. Pansin nyo kalinang umaga, wala yung pinakikigan ko si Brother Abit, nabanggit niya na naman, anointed, anointing. In other words, ang anointing with oil, okay, is a symbol of, ang oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Ang oil in antiquity is a common commodity. Gamit ito kahit nung mga panahon pa in ancient times and uh, in uh, Bible times. Na itong oil, ang gamit nila dito na ngayon ay sinabi ng Panginoon, anointing oil, ay ang oil in antiquity ay gamit sa il ilang uh, paraan. Una, ang masyak o ang oil ay ginagamit ito uh, bilang pabango o kaya panglinis ng mukha o kaya bilang gamot. Findings nga ng DOST ay nakatutulong raw against COVID 
ang virgin coconut oil. Marami na ito, dudulot raw itong virgin coconut oil. So anyway, ito ay ginagamit as a perfume with some spices na inilalagay niya dito. Naghalimuyak talaga yan. Okay? Sa Old Testament muna tayo. Then, it is used, okay? It is used uh, for lighting. Di ba sa mga ilawa nila, ang gamit nila oil before it, the advent of electricity. Ginagamit nila ito doon. Uh, sa mga gamit sa temple, lahat ng gamit doon sa temple is anointed as commanded by God. Kung nasimulan ninyo ang study on the tabernacle, lahat yon ay anointed. Ang ibig sabihin ng anointed ay uh, yung word na uh, unction, is ang ibig sabihin, it means consecrated. Okay? Ito ay consecrated. Uh, ito ay, tingnan natin ngayon uh, na ang word na ito ay uh, may uh, kaugnayan sa ibang bagay bago natin itutok doon sa lugar ng consecration ang ibig sabihin nito. Then we can find na ito ay gamit sa pagluluto. Nung panahon pa yon kahit ka sa New Testament ginagamit ito, ito produce uh, light, uh, to produce yung pagluto nila ng unleavened bread, etc. Mahalaga ito sa pagkain nila. And then, ito ay uh, ginagamit, ang oil ay ginagamit bilang gamot. Dito ay ating uh, uh, mapapansin ito sa aklat ni James na sabi niya, anointing them with oil. Yung mga may sakit ay gamitan ninyo ng, uh, ng oil sapagkat malaki ang maitutulong bilang may therapeutic value ang langis. Kasi hindi pa naman sila tulad natin ngayon, uh, you can buy uh, uh, may prescription or over-the-counter na gamot uh, intended for what particular disease. So ating mapapansin, multiple ang gamit ng oil. Pero ang ating bibigyang pansin ay ang tungkol sa anointing. Bakit? Maliban doon sa mga kagamitan, uh, doon sa uh, 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 loob ng tabernakulo, things, ay ngayon, ay ito ay may kaugnayan sa persona, sa offices. Dito'y ating mapapansin sa aklat ng Exodus ay ang unang iniutos ng Panginoon sa isang office, three offices na ito'y hinirang ng Panginoon para uh, sa bayan ng Israel at ito ay may significance uh, sa bayan ng Israel in the uh, New Testament times. Ang tatlong offices na ito ay tinatawag mga types o larawan na darating na Kristo. Yung uh, word mismo na anointed ay from the Hebrew word masyak at sa kayong uh, 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 Greek word na ito ay krio, anointed, at ang ancient ay it means Krisma, ibig sabihin, Kristos. That's the name of Jesus Christ. He is the anointed Jesus, Messiah, Kristos, anointed. He is the anointed. So the first anointed officer sa Old Testament ay itong mga priest na sinabi uh, sa aklat ng Exodus ay ating mapapansin sa Exodus chapter 28 verse 41 ang tatlong magkakasamang termino sa likod ng anointed ay binibigay dito sa atin sa Exodus sapagkat dito na magpapasimula ang three most important offices na ibinigay ng Panginoon na makatutulong sa bayan ng Israel sa Old Testament na itong lahat ay nagkaroon ng uh, kaganapan uh, sa persona ng Panginoon Kristo bilang isang anino ito ng Panginoon. Sa Exodus chapter uh, 28 verse 
28 verse 41 ay ating mapapansin ito Sabi dito sa atin 28:41 okay verse 41 And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him and shall anoint them. Ito ngayon sinabi ko palang kanina, consecrate them and sanctify them. Magkakasama yun. Anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them that they may minister unto me in the priest office, the office of of the high priest and the priest, Aaron's son. So, Aaron sa New Testament, yung high priest ay larawan ng Panginoon Kristo and the priest, his sons, ay larawan ng bawat anak ng Diyos. Sa New Testament, ang counterpart. Kaya, pumapasok doon yung anointing ng bawat believers. Okay, so second, the, it has become a practice tuwing uh, nagkakaroon sila ng panibagong high priest na kinakailangan i-anoint, i-induction. Ito ay uh, 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 mahalaga na proseso para makita ng bawat mamayan na ito, ang opisinang ito ay nagmula sa Panginoong Diyos. Hindi ito kagagawan ng tao. Second, ay ating mapapansin, ay ang office ng prophet. Kaya nga, ang tatlong opisinang ito, all finds it, its complete, uh, com, uh, completion in the person of Jesus Christ who is prophet, priest, and king. And puproban ko yun mamaya sa uh, bawat isa atin. Sa 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, nung panahon na, nang uh, tina- tatawagin ng Panginoong Diyos at ipapasundo sa chariot of fire, si Elijah, sabi ng Panginoon, i-anoint mo ang iyong maging successor na si Elijah. Ang nagpili, ang Panginoon. I-anoint mo si Elijah bilang maging successor mo because you will be uh, coming before my presence alive. Okay? The only one na among uh, uh, the prophets na nakapasok ng langit ng buhay because God has a plan and a purpose for that. So, lahat ng uh, prophets na hinalal na at pangino, binigay ng Panginoon para uh, uh, magdala ng mensahe sa bayan ng Israel ay pinupunasan, pinapahiran o binubuhusan ng uh, langis. Third, King. Sa 1 Samuel chapter 16 ng humingi na uh, ang bayan ng Israel ay nalalay sa Panginoon. Gusto nila maging tulad na rin sila ng ibang uh, bayan na nakapaligid sa kanila na sila'y pamunuan na rin ng isang taong hari kikaysa Diyos uh, bilang hari nila sa ilalim ng theocratic kingdom ay sabi na pa uh, uh, nalungkot ang Panginoon pero sabi niya magsisisi kayo dito I'll permit you but you will reap the consequences you will regret this yun ay sinabi rin uh, ni Samuel sa bayan but just the same God permitted it to happen kung ano hiningi niya, binibigay sa inyo ng Panginoon. Kaya hindi lahat ng mga uh, hiningi natin at binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon, be very careful, baka makasama ito sa atin kaysa makabuti ito sa atin. And at times when God uh, uh, withholds it, is it is for our good because He has something much better. Okay? So, uh, naalala ko tuloy, isang mayamang pamilya, may anak sila na iniiwanan sa isang yaya, etc. Isang araw, narinig sa kwarto, narinig ng mother na yung anak nila ay uh, alakas, umiiyak, uh, lahat. 
Pagkatapos, nairita na yung uh, ma- uh, mother, sabi niya, Yaya, bakit ba hindi mapigil yan? Iyak na iyak ang aking anak. Kasi yung may uh, gusto siya, hinihingi o siya, eh, hindi ko binibigay. Sabi niya, eh, para matigil na ang kaiyak ng anak ko, ibigay mo na. O sige po. Pina- eh, sabi niya, sige na, anak, hulihin mo na yung bubuyog. Eh, Pagkili, anak niya, ay eh, tinuklaw siya ng bubuyog, di lalo siyang umiyak. Kasi magkasama. So, ating yung mapapansin na uh, dito ang tatlong opisinang ito ay uh, may uh, lugar sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Kasi ang anointing with the Spirit has to do with the induction into an office as well as to a particular task na itinalaga ng Panginoon sa iyo. Now, we can find in these three divine offices na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa Old Testament that it all uh, found its uh, complete fulfillment sa Panginoon Kristo ay prophet, priest, and king. Here are the task of these offices and officers. Young priest, the priest was given by the Lord uh, for uh, the uh, people para maging ma-represent niya ang mga mamamayan before God. Yan ang function ng priest that is so he could intercede and mediate okay, for his people before God. So, he represents the people before God. Kaya, Panginoon, ganun. Second, itong prophet ay the prophet represents God to the people. Siya ang nagdadala ng mga mensahe mula sa Diyos sa mga tao. Okay? So nakita natin, hindi sila nag-overlap. Hindi nila inaagawan ang isa't isa. May kanya-kanyang function sila. Then yung king, ibinigay ng Panginoon, pinaintulot ng Panginoon, the king is to rule the people for God. So, Uh, God being the King of Kings, humingi sila na sila paghariyan rin ng tao, pinaintulot ng Panginoon, na ngayon, ito ay mamumuno sa kanila. Last Sunday night, napansin natin ito, na nalungkot ang Panginoon sapagkat ang Israel ay yung mga hari ay maliban sa inilayo ang bayan sa Panginoon, kundi ito ay hindi na sumusunod sa mga kautosan ng Panginoon. Kaya nga, sila yung mga bad shepherds. Kasi sila ang dapat na mamun. As the priests and as the kings are, so are the people. Ang rule ni Jeremiah. So ngayon ay ating naintindihan na ang bagay na ito, na ito ay maghahanda ang Old Testament at mga anointing dito ay inihanda Sapagkat ang mga ito, mga nasa offices na ito, prophet, priest, and king sa Old Testament, ay mga tao sila. They have uh, had their witnesses. They had their sins, their shortcomings. But yung office points to the perfect one. Ang totoo talaga na high priest, na prophet, at na king. And then this anointing at sa three offices na ito, I, it is passed on sa New Testament for its fulfillment, ang anointing. So, it, it is expanded dito sa New Testament sapagkat ito ngayon ay magkakaroon ng katuparan sa mga inilalarawan sa Old Testament na bukod tanging ang Panginoong Kristo lamang ang perfect prophet, perfect priest, high priest, at perfect king because he is no ordinary mortal. He is God incarnate in human flesh na ayaw paniwalaan ng mga false teachers na sabi na sa amin lang kayo maniwala na lahat ng turo nila 
ay salungat sa turo ng Panginoon at ng salita ng Diyos. Hindi ibig sabihin na wala, huwag kayo uh, paturo sa mga uh, tao. Yung mga tao, maling mga katuruan. Kundi iyong tamang katuruan ay tinuturo iyo sa banal na kasularan sapagkat sila ibinibigay ng Panginoon sa gawain ng Diyos. Uh, God has given gifts to teachers, to preachers, and etc. At habang maayos ang turo nila, ayos sa Biblia, ay sundan natin. At pag tayo inilalayo sa Panginoon at mali ang turo, ay you better seek God's will. <laughs> Because you can expect God to bless you when you are following errors. Nagiging kulto ka. Okay, now let's go to the New Testament. Nasabi ko na sa inyo, na isa ang kahulugan ng unction. Madalas din yung narinig sa akin, sa akin ang unction. The unction of the Spirit or anointing. Okay? Kung ang anointing o ang unction ng Spirito ay mahalaga sa Panginoon na siya ay tagapagligtas at siya ay Diyos na katawang tao, ay ito'y may lugar sa Kanya ay huwag nating i-minimize o kaya pahindian na ito'y hindi natin kailangan. Okay? Kasi somewhere along the line ng tayo magpasimula sa buhay kristyano, we were indwelt by the Spirit and the Spirit is filling us uh, and controlling us ay essential ito sa ating maalaman natin ito. So ang Panginoong Kristo sa New Testament, He is addressed as our High Priest sa Hebrews chapter 7 uh, verse 25 forward and chapter 10 this man our Lord Jesus Christ who offered himself yung high priest sa Old Testament they offered uh, a sacrifice yung lamb na hinihingi ng Panginoon pero sa New Testament Jesus Christ offered himself the high priest himself offered himself as a sacrifice and then our Lord Jesus Christ is a prophet Many times, namangha ang mga tao sa kanya, just like uh, the Samaritan woman na sinabi niya, first time na nag-meet sila, they are uh, 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 strangers to each other. He was a Jew and this woman was a Samaritan. At sinabi na ng Panginoon ang kalagayan ng babaeng ito, na ikaw ay lalakero. Lalakero, limang uh, asawa mo at kabit mo. At ang kinakasama mo ngayon hindi mo asawa. Nagulat yung babae. Sabi niya, ngayon lang kami nagtagpo at hindi nga kami magkakilala. Sinabi niya kaagad sa akin yan. Sabi niya, Sir, you are a prophet. Sa so John chapter 4. And then Jesus Christ is king. Now, unto the king eternal, immortal, the only wise God. At ang sabi ni, uh, ni Herod, at ni Pilate nang siya ipinapako sa krus, ilagay itong sign ito. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the King. Ano sabi doon? Of the Jews. So ating mapapansin, all three offices were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Nag-over time si Brother Abed ng 10 minutes kanina. Kaya, nag-over time lang ako ng konti. So let's uh, close. Number three, Okay. Let me get this straight. Na ang anointing with the Spirit is essential sa buhay Kristiano sapagkat ang buhay Kristiano is not a playground. It is a battleground. Sa buhay ng Panginoon, he was anointed with the Spirit because he is going to go through rough times, rough trials and ra, uh, rough troubles. Yung rough temptations niya sa Luke chapter 4. So the Holy Spirit anointed him. And that serves us to empower him. So I think introduce him, induct him into the office that he is what he claims to be. He is Jesus the Christ. The Savior, the Anointed One. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Krisma o Kriyo 
Oh, Masiak, when we get the English word Messiah, anointed one. So from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it all points to one and the same person, Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised I will come again. And when he comes again, riding on the white horse, he has on his crown the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, ang essentiality nito sa buhay kristyano. Dito maraming kristyano nagkakamali. One saved, always saved. Yes, fine, true. But God did not save you just to save you. He saved you to serve Him. Yan ang motto ng Baptist Bible College sa Springfield. Enter to learn, go forth to serve. You are saved not to be a celebrity, but as a servant. Isa sa mga titles ng Kristiyano is Servants of the Most High God. As servants, as soldiers, and as stewards, kailangan ang anointing ng Holy Spirit. Okay? Three areas ng priesthood ng Old Testament ng Panginoong Kristo ay it applies to us from the very teaching of Jesus Christ. Essential ito because you will go through trials, temptations, troubles. Sa sir, paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy work, but it pays. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, whatever we do in the name of serving God, I, it is of no value to God because it is either routine, mechanical, or the flesh. We need the unction or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yung three offices ng Panginoon ay... Ito ay offices rin ng bawat anak ng Diyos. Wa? Ganun ba? Kaya nga ang Panginoon is address as King of Kings. Ibig sabihin kong King of Kings, pero mga kings pa. Sa Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, binigay ng Panginoon ang katotohan ng ito. Tingnan natin please, sa Revelation chapter 1, If we suffer with Him, we shall rule with Him. We are going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ in the future sa millennial reign ng Panginoon na ang sabi dito sa Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Sabi dito, And hath made us kings and priests. Now, you cannot deny that that this refers to believers. He hath made us kings and priests. Siyang high priest, tayo mga priest. In other words, the truth of the anointing, the doctrine of the anointing with the Spirit, is connected or corollary ito sa teaching ng Bible, the priesthood, of all believers. You are a believer priest. Extreme na mga Baptist, the priesthood of the church. At mas mataas pa ang church kikaysa Panginoon. Ini-exalt ang church. We are to exalt Christ and Christ alone. He is our high priest. He is not the priesthood of the church. That is sacerdotalism and that is what the cults and the Catholic Church teaches that you cannot approach Christ except through the or God except through the church. Believers has the privilege to go directly before God. On the merits of our high priest, Jesus Christ, sa Hebrews chapter 7, He intercedes for us. 
down here on earth, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So yung Trinity ay magkasama-sama yung gumagawa sa ating buhay upang siya ay malalhati sa pamagitan natin. And then, notice with me please, etong prophet sa New Testament sa ibinigay ng mga offices ay sinabi dito and New Testament prophets ng bawat anak ng Diyos yung New Testament prophets ano gawain ng prophets? ay tulad sa Old Testament he declares a message from God to the people and that is to do with him either teaching preaching or whatever uh, ministry connected with the service for God's glory in and through the church. Okay, so let me now give you a direct, okay, dito as king, priest, and prophet. As priest, ang function ng priest ay it has to do with worship. Ibinigay ng Panginoon si Aaron at saka ang tribe ng Levi as the priestly tribe ay that is to worship the Lord. Sila nagdiling ko doon sa tabernacle sa loob. Not all the people but sila. Sa New Testament on the marriage of the high priest all believers can go directly and worship the Lord. Uh, here's the point sa ministry natin, because this is a spiritual ministry, apart from the Holy Spirit, ang worship natin is of no importance sa harap ng Diyos if it is apart from the Spirit. Why? Because the Bible tells us, Jesus Christ speaking, God is Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in body. Yung ba sinabi? No, in spirit rin eh. So spiritual yan. Spirit to spirit. Okay. The body, sunod-sunuran lang ito eh. Yung under the control or the dictate ng Holy Spirit, it connects us with the Father in our worship. And the Apostle Paul was anointed. And all believers in the New Testament, the writers, ang sabi niya, I will sing with the Spirit and sing with the understanding also. Let's face it, not all singing are pleasing to God. Even Christian singing, especially when it comes in the form of entertainment para makita sila na magaling sila kumanda. Do you get my point? Praying is routine. O nag-pray ka na ba? Yung mga ba tinuturuan natin, no? uh, uh, tinitrain natin, it's, it's, this is not wrong. But you know what? Sabi ni Apostle Paul, I will pray with the Spirit. Nananalangin tayo, buddy, pero yung ating mga isip na roon sa ibang lugar. O kaya, nag-ring. Ang concentration natin, hindi sa kanya. May interruption. Kaya ang prayer is not easy. Akala natin, madali siya. We just mumble words. Tapos na. Ang praying that counts before God, that availeth much, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man who is ancient, who is anointed by the Spirit, I accomplish as much. Then we find as kings. Anong ginagawa ng kings? Di ba ang kings ay siyang nag-lead during a time of war? So, boy, Christiano, the Christian life is a warfare. Bakit sinabi ni Apostle, well, put on the whole, the complete armor of God. We are good soldiers of Jesus Christ. And as kings, little kings, under the king of kings, I, we are to be engaged in spiritual combat, spiritual warfare. Diyan marami Christiano hindi pa nagsisimula bagsak na warfare the christian life is a lifetime warfare because our enemies na sinabi niya sa Ephesians we fight 
principalities, powers in high places is an invisible spiritual warfare. And then the moment that we do not know the place and the importance of being anointed by the Spirit, we succumb, defeated and discouraged. We turn our backs. Hira pala. Eh, sa armor of God, wala sa likod. <laughs> you are an easy victim to the enemy. And then sa prophet, ano gawa ng prophet? Sa Acts chapter 1, you shall be witnesses. So pag we witness natin, how we say the word of God sa atin, uh, it doesn't mean much. Basta pag pag-share ka, it's not that easy. You need the Spirit of God. Lord, as I go out of uh, our home, I pray that you would lead me uh, perhaps to someone na mabigyan ko ng track na ito o kung ma- uh, kausap ko, ay mawitnessan ko talaga siya. You go unprepared. You have to seek the Spirit's help. Because you cannot do all these things on your own. Kaya nga si Calvin, nagsalita si Calvin, there is no worse screen to block our sp- uh, spirit. Wala raw higit na screen o balakid na makapagbablock sa spirit to maliban sa confidence in ourselves or in man. Alam mo confidence natin sa ating sarili o sa tao. Kaya nang binibilap ng sanglibutan, self-confidence. Self is the poor self. Yung spirit ay naisa tatabi. And we succumb to that very wily, very deceitful ang approach ng sanglibutan. So, for worship, for witnessing, and for warfare, you cannot expect to win or be victorious apart from the anointing of the Spirit. Yung anointing dito ng Spirit has to do with His protective gear. It has to do, kung kay control ka na, it has to do with uh, how He hedges us. Pinapalibutan niya tayo so that when we enter into combat and go into the world, ay naroon siya. Nagpo-protect siya sa atin. And I would like to close on this, this way. I, I know we have gone over time, but mas mahalaga ito. Isang araw, <clears throat> ay merong isang mag This happened in the States. Yung tatay niya, is an electrical engineer. At magaling siyang electrician. Eh. Electrical engineer who works in uh, uh, a, a, a plant, sa electrical uh, plant. Isang araw, Christian sila, isang araw, yung anak niya, 12-year-old son, nababalisa siya. Sabi niya, Daddy, hindi ako makapaniwala na may Espiritu, Espiritu Santo, sapagkat hindi ko naman siya nakikita. I can't believe the Holy Spirit because I don't see Him. Di ba ganun rin sa Diyos? In other words, bata pa siya to see is to believe na. So ang kanyang tatay being a Christian and a wise man as he is an, as an engineer, electrical engineer, sabi niya, son, you go with me to uh, my place of work. Okay, we'll go there. So, dinala niya ang kanyang anak. Anak, oh, you see, this is the source of electricity. This plant, okay, produces as a source the electric, electrical current, yung electricity para pumunta sa bahay natin at magamit natin ang mga electrical gadgets, electrical uh, uh, na uh, gamit sa bahay tulad ng ref, tulad ng TV, uh, uh, tulad ng marami pang iba. Okay. So sabi niya, nak- nakita mo ng uh, anak, ayan. Yung electricity, hindi mo nakikita. 
Pero ngayon, di nalang nakita sa source. Nakikita mo yung source na nag-produce. Yung hindi mo man nakikita yung electricity, pero nakikita mo kung ano ang gawain ng electricity. Di ba? Di mo nakikita yun. Kung maniwala na may kuryente, kahit nakita ko may ila, nag- kaya nagkaroon ng ila, hindi ka talaga maniwala. Yayain mo si Alika dito, may dalawang wife ka, isaksak e, e, ito, hawakan mo yan. Baka hindi ka mamatay para bag hindi ka namatay. Sabi, hindi ka maniwala, dali mo nakikita. Okay, so pag nila, sabi ng tatay niya, Son, I believe in electricity as an electrician, I believe in electricity though I cannot see electricity. But I can see what electricity does. You got the point? God bless you. Our Father, we thank you this morning that you have freely enrich us with your Holy Spirit. I pray that all of us would grow in grace and be spiritual as your people and live a well-balanced life between this life and the world to come. And if we have to put premium between the two, that the eternal would be first. And thank you for loving us and giving us your only begotten Son to be our Mashiach, our Messiah, our Savior, our High Priest, and our King who is coming again. I pray that you would bless each one here today and bless uh, Brother Rafi as another year has been added to his il- uh, to his earthly life and pilgrimage. We thank you and praise you and pray for the others that were not able to come to be with us because we are meeting on uh, res- uh, with restriction and uh, with uh, limitations. But just the same, we are grateful because we were able to come uh, under this house and under the roof of this meeting house. We bless you and thank you for everything that has had a part in this worship service, whether here or by way of uh, uh, the streamlining ministry. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, it's good to see you and uh, have you here with, <clears throat> with us today. And may the Lord uh, uh, just open our hearts and continue to fill us and we would see the Spirit work in our lives for His glory. Okay? Brother Rafi's birthday today. Uh, Brother Sunny, or uh, uh, song leader, special Sunday <laughs> sa kanyang buhay. Okay? <laughs> Rafi, a birthday song, Tristan, sa? First now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Sige now. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Salvation. How many have you? Last time, Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true. May God's richest blessings now rest upon you. Happy birthday. ko lang magpasalamat sa Panginoon. Sabi ko nga, uh, uh, 
another uh, birthday since na, na, so second birthday nung wala nang mangyari yung sa akin this se second celebration of my birthday so actually i think i have already four birthdays okay first yung birth yung kap kapanganakan ko talaga yung pinanganak ko dito sa mundo Secondly, nung nagkaroon din ako ng aksidente nung, nung nasa school pa ako, uh, muntik na rin ako nun. Third, which is the most important sa lahat, yun ay, when I was born in the spirit, in salvation, at ngayon nga yung pang, pang apat, yung nangyari last year, I was born again. <laughs> Given, I was revived, and I'm alive. So, salamat sa Panginoon at uh, sabi yung uh, ang palagi kong tinatanong sa aking sarili ano ba nagawa ko na that God would look at me that way na all these years na pinangalagaan niya ako iningatat binless with a uh, a good wife A wonderful wife who never let, kailan man, hindi, hindi niya ako iliwan din. She never gave up on me when I'm, when I have already given up. So, yun ang tanong ko nga eh. What have I done should, that I should deserve such a wonderful woman who loves me and me? Will, willing to give, give everything for me. She never wavered in her faith. She trusted the Lord that He would, he, he would deliver me. And uh, grant, God granted her prayer and the prayer of the saints. So all, all glory sa Panginoon. Binibigay ko sa Panginoon. Eh. Ang sabi ng nga lang eh. Uh, all the uh, the remaining years of my life, eh, I have already dedicated to the Lord. At sabi nga ang tanging panalain ko na lang. Uh, let the, the things that had happened to me be a be a blessing to others also that they will be na mat malam nila. There is a God who answers prayers. There is a God who always guides us. And most importantly, there's a God who loves us. At kailanman pagmamahal niya sa atin, hindi niya matutumbas sa anong kahit anong bagay at kahit sino man dito sa atin. He loves us. Uh, uh, beyond our imagination. So, let's be faithful in serving the Lord. Daily comes and uh, again thank you brethren sa inyong support sa aking family uh, through your prayers Amen. I have reached this uh, ganitong uh, situation itong edad na ano nga, 59, 59 na ako actually so one year na lang I will be senior citizen <laughs> so Uh, blessing ang lahat ng buhay ng Panginoon na binigay sa amin ng Panginoon. Hindi ko, hindi ko na lang po ma... Ano, uh, I can only imagine lahat ng yung blessings niya sa pamilya namin. Uh, ang dami ng pinagdaanan. Yet through those trials and testings, tinuturuan niya kaming magtiwala sa Kanya. At lalo pang tumatatag ang aming pananampalataya. Ang lahat ng papuri, pasalamat ibi, ay binabalik ko sa Panginoon. To God be the glory. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Meron lang po kaming konting inihanda sa baba. <laughs> Just grab your ano, uh, pinak na lang namin para hindi ano eh. <laughs>